How are you guys doing? Mike's a little hot. Who all has uh, seen the movie? And is that a nice way to start? Alright, uh, that's a good start. Uh, when we started this project, we sort of uh, were asked to sort of take a live action paradigm for filmmaking and turn it into uh, a virtual production in some ways. Uh, so Jim essentially wanted to go to another planet and, uh, and make a movie, but make it with, without any of the limitations of the iterative process that exists in a, an animation, traditional animation pipeline. Um, what we did, first, first and foremost, that beyond going to another planet, he wanted to do it in a jungle. Shooting in a jungle by the nature of it is, is awkward and hard. We, uh, we set up a, uh, a volume where we had undulating terrain, but he wanted specifically the actors to experience actually being in a rainforest. You know, so one of the very first things we did to make it very real for the actors, we, we made this huge effort to make everything seem uh, real and physically correct for the actors. So he took to Hawaii. We all went out, and then what he did was dressed Sam in a line cloth, put him barefoot in the jungle, under to understand what that felt like. And we were in Kauai, actually. And what he did was uh, literally out shoot Sam, moving around in the forest, you'd get a sense of, of what was going on. But sure as, sure as shit, you're in the middle of nowhere, and there's a guy walking his dog. So Sam jumps out of, this, out of the bushes in a line cloth, and the guy is standing there with his dog. He's like, what the? I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What the fuck's going on? And he's like, oh. We're making a movie. He's like, really? He goes, yeah, you see him over there holding the handy cam? He goes, that's James Cameron. He goes, yeah, really? He goes, yeah, the guy that directed Titanic? He says, Jesus, he's fallen really far, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> that's actually a true story. But, uh, <laughs> but <clears throat> aside from him trying to get, a, get a, a real sense for the actors, we had to figure out a way to make this sort of uh, paradigm shift in filmmaking, which was that we wanted everything that we understood about uh, making a full 3D movie uh, and, and its pipeline and how it functions, basically to have little or no waste on the animation side. You, so you pre-plan everything. Uh, well, live action, it's a much more organic experience. You know, you go to set, you have a script, you, you, you have your actors out there. But what you basically do is you sort of, not that you wing it, but there's a certain bit of quality or an organic nature to shooting on set that, that shows itself only when you're there. And what we, Jim specifically didn't want to lose was that quality. But he still wanted to shoot a virtual movie. So we had to come up with a way to fuse both of them. Uh, we'll step through a, a lengthy enough pipeline. Hopefully it won't be uh, too, too much information at once. But what we can do is we'll stop for questions if there's anything that's not clear as we go. It will give us an opportunity to at least kind of get a basis for, for, for what's not clear. Uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see where we go from there. And just to give you a little history on Avatar, you know, if you've watched any of the making of any behind the scenes, you may have seen Jim talk about it. And uh, actually, he wrote the script back in the mid 90s. So he had the story uh, in line quite a while ago, but uh, at the time, he was head of uh, Digital Domain, one of the premier uh, visual effects companies in the industry. And he took the script to his people and he said, uh, you know, what do you think? What, make this happen and they looked at it honestly and said, Jim, it's not going to work. We can't make it to the level that you want to make this movie and the type of movie you want to make. So he put it on the shelf and uh, went off and made a little movie about a ship sinking in the North Atlantic. It uh, did pretty well. And uh, but then around eight, nine years ago when the Lord of the Rings trilogy came out, he saw evidence of the technology evolving. You know, he saw virtual environments that were photoreal and he saw characters especially that were photo real and lifelike and really main characters in the movie, not just background characters running around. So that, that, that kind of reignited the spark for this story. And he realized that these pieces were coming together and uh, rekindled the interest. In, and so then he did something really smart. And because the solution for this didn't exist in any one place, he took all of these different technology advancements and combined them and then hired a team to, to really create this production solution. So that's really where we started in this, is, is figuring out how to create that live action paradigm that she's talking about, and, and make that an interactive process for the director. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to take you through that process, and that's really what was unique about Avatar, as Richie mentioned, is really what we were trying to do is make it simple on the surface for the director, make it like live action, make it interactive, intuitive, spontaneous, all those things that you, you hope for, and also have the creative freedom 
to make those changes on a stage that you don't have a home action because a lot of it is computer generated. So I'm going to start by showing you actually um, the asset side. I'm going to start that drive over here. And so we kind of step through this first part. So we put a core team together at Lightstorm, uh, about 20 of us. And you know, you hear about Avatar taking four years to do. Really the first year was figuring out what the heck we were doing because there, there was no guideline. So there was a lot of head banging, a lot of long nights and hair pulling to figure out how to bring these pieces together and make a cohesive process for the production because there were so many shots we had to push through, we, we couldn't wait, you know, we couldn't do it halfway. We had to make sure that we turned over every stone that would be a potential problem in the work otherwise we'd have been doing once we got into production. So we spent a lot of time working out the pipeline elements, the parts that aren't fun, but we knew were really important to making this work. So really it starts for us with uh, making the assets. And uh, Richie, you want to yeah, <clears throat> well, what we're looking at here is that uh, we may want to go forward again, that's just a couple of frames. And we'll, uh, pause it there. So, what you're looking at is basically an environment where uh, this is how we shot them. We produced a template, which is this is what goes to the vendor before you know you, you see these final images that you see in the movie right now. And obviously, the final image that you saw, well, they're fanta absolutely fantastic and they're incredibly innovative. innovative. The, uh, the process of get there was very, very different on this movie uh, than, than the normal process. So what we had to do was basically account for every single element that you saw, every blade of grass, every plant, uh, each character, you know, and, and all of their outfits, their possible changes to wardrobe. Everything had to be designed, built, all the creatures. Like a traditional uh, animated movie or, or live action movie, but with, a big with one big exception, which is that everything that you produce, we produced from an artwork standpoint had to become a reality in a low poly, low, very low poly count version that could run in real time. Uh, so the asset generation literally is a point where we generated every single element that you see by, you know, individually, then combined them into sets. Once we ha had the actual sets put together, you, it becomes modular in some ways. You, you, you start to get uh, uniquely art-directed, you know, pieces of jungle that you could steal and take and put, put, use, reuse. But at the same time, you have to get to that force point. So there's a lot of weight in the pre-production phase of, of building this. One with the with all the art directors and designers, production designers, and then two, you know, actually the execution. So, uh, <laughs> you want to play? Sure. So that is signal transduction from that tree over there in this other room. So we should take a sample. Okay. So you know it's probably electrical based on the speed of the reaction. Norm, you yeah. contaminated the sample with your signal. Yeah. Right. And so. Post 